Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Encaustic literally means to burn in. So I paint with beeswax and a torch, and because it's mixed media, pretty much anything else I can get my hands on. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Consider subscribing and joining this artsy community. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, which helps me get introduced to more like-minded artsy folks like yourself. Good morning. Back in the studio and I'm going to pick up where I left off with this large painting and I'm going to be working on the pathway this morning. I feel like I always say this, but I have a very short window of painting time today. And so I'm just gonna try to get that path um, somewhat done and then go from there. And these are the four kind of basic colors that I'm gonna be using on that path. And I also thought I would show you that I emptied out this drip tray and put it into a metal tin so we're gonna see what kind of color we get out of all of those colors which will probably be a gray or a brown hopefully not mud i wanted to point out a couple quick things before i let you sit back and watch this painting process and the first one is that i don't always heat up my panels before applying paint um, and there's a couple of reasons. Um, this time though, I am going to be heating up the panel as you see here with the torch because I want this layer to be somewhat of a smooth layer seeing as how it's the path. And I just kind of want that to blend in smoothly to the background. And then I'm going to be adding a lot of texture later. The other thing I wanted to point out is that gray color that you'll see me using here shortly is actually a mix from the, the drip tray of several paintings back. So I just wanted to point out that I definitely use those grays and browns from that drip tray and try hard not to waste any wax. by little this painting is getting there I think I'm gonna leave it here for today I also added some pink in the trees while I had some pink out on the griddle just to add a little bit more um, highlights to those trees so um, I think I'm gonna leave you here today hoping to pick you up either tomorrow or slightly later in the week to keep going on this so stay tuned for you it'll just be a few seconds Thought I'd show you our mystery color here too. Get it all mixed up nicely. Kind of a grayish purple tone. I'm gonna uh, pour it into the silicone mold and we'll see what color it comes out as. Good morning. It is a rainy, dreary day out there. Hopefully you can hear me. The rain is kind of starting to fall a little bit harder on the metal roof. Um, so hopefully you can hear me. But I wanted to flip the camera around and show you what I did yesterday. So these three pine trees, and if you can hear that, that was a crow, <laughs> are not on the big painting, obviously. So yesterday I took and sketched out 
those three pine trees and I basically took and kind of measured up on the painting here to figure out about what height I wanted them. So I sketched this version out and then if I flip this over, I sketched this version out and I picked the pine trees that I liked the best. And then I traced on a piece of tracing paper over those pine trees that I liked the best. And today's plan is to use this tracing paper to place these onto the painting. And I think they're gonna go, sorry, that was not on camera. <laughs> I think they're gonna go about right there. But the tracing paper, again, just allows me to like move them around, arrange them on the painting how I think I might want them. And once I figure out where I want it, I just tape it down in a couple areas with the blue painter's tape. And then I put graphite transfer paper underneath it. And if that glare would go away, there we go, kind of maybe. This is the graphite transfer paper that I use. It comes in pretty big sheets, which is nice. So you can transfer um, large drawings and things like that. I've had this for a while. If um, I can find it, I'll put a link below. Two more quick things about this transfer method, tracing paper method. Um, I don't know if you noticed in that quick little time lapse, but I moved the tracing paper just slightly and that one pine tree seemed a little crooked to me um, on my sketch. So that's the nice thing about the tracing paper. You can just kind of tweak it just a little bit according to how the painting is. And um, it's really nice to do that. Anyways, the other thing also has to do with this transfer graphite paper. And that is you have to press pretty hard to get it to transfer. But the nice thing about it is it doesn't leave any smudges where you don't want smudges. So those marks might be a little bit hard to see in the camera, but um, I've used other transfer, graphite transfer paper, and it leaves smudges on the wax. Now, the nice thing with the wax is you can always kind of scrape up those smudges just ever so lightly, gently, and um, you know, it takes it away. But um, this graphite, I have noticed you have to press pretty firmly, but it doesn't, you know, wherever you might have like your palm or if you kind of accidentally rest a little bit on the painting or with the graphite paper on it, it doesn't leave a mark there where other transfer papers do. I hope that makes some sense. And now that I have those lines transferred onto the painting, let's get to actually painting and putting some paint down on these trees. I am grabbing just a couple small, tiny, detailed brushes for these pine trees. I'm going to be adding in a lot of different layers with these small brushes. And just another note, as always, I mix in some clear encaustic medium with my store-bought paint. I've mentioned this in other videos. I think I mentioned this in the previous video. In fact, I'll link that up here, up top here, if you missed out on that but um, the store-bought paints really do go a long way and you can mix in quite a bit of medium. That will save you money and paint.
So I think this these green layers are almost done. I can't remember how many green layers I've actually added on to here. But you can see these small paint brushes don't hold a lot of paint, but they give you these fine, tiny little lines, which is what I'm going for. And I spend a lot of time at this point in stage kind of stepping back, looking at the painting, getting up close, painting more layers on the painting. And I've decided I want to add in some white highlights to these. So getting out another teeny tiny little brush and adding in those white highlights. All right, I'm not completely convinced that these pine trees are done. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're not. But I do need to call it here for the day and I will pick you guys back up in a bit. For you, it'll literally, literally be just a few seconds. So, um, But first, let me flip the camera around and get a couple close-ups for you of these pine trees. <laughs> Don't mind my uh, easel there, <laughs> the fire extinguisher. But um, there they are. I think they're pretty good but I'm not exactly sure. I'm gonna obviously put in more background and things like that uh, just to keep going on this. But um, again, that will be for a, another day. So in the meantime, enjoy some pine trees. And uh, we'll see you in a few days. Good morning. <laughs> We're back to um, layering up. It is frigid outside. Um, I apparently spring slash summer is not here yet. But um, anyways, in the studio, I got the wax turned on and I'm gonna try to tackle more of these pine trees or adding a little bit more to them. I believe I said earlier that I wanted this area to kind of be the focal point, if you will and they're just not popping off enough. So um, I could go in and mute the background a little bit more, but I think I'm gonna try to fix them up first and hopefully that will work. So that's today's plan. I also might come over on this pathway and add a little bit more of that pink kind of grayish color, like what's in the sketch here take away a little bit some of this yellow area. So um, yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> we'll see how far we get. All right, so I really didn't mean for this to become a teaching moment um, at all, but even for people like myself, painters like myself, who have been painting with encaustic for some, quite some time, it's a good reminder. If you heat your surface up just ever so slightly, the paint comes off of the paint brushes a little bit easier than if it was a cold surface, as I think you can kind of see here. Um, so anyways, that's why I heated this surface up. And especially with these teeny tiny little brushes is that they don't hold a lot of paint. If you're working onto a warmer surface, that paint does come off of the brushes a little bit easier. All right, I think these trays are a bit better. Um, I just wanted to mention two things here, um, or more like one thing, I guess. Um, the torch that I use is a burns o TS3500, and the reason I like this torch is because you can turn it down really, really low. So for these fine details, you don't want to torch it too much because it'll just kind of smush all everything out and just kind of spread the wax out. So you just wanna heat it, you still need to fuse it because you still need to fuse that wax layer to the layer underneath. Um, otherwise it just uh, flakes off. So you still need to fuse it, but if you fuse it with just a really soft flame, it keeps all those little teeny tiny details that you just put in. So um, I know I've mentioned this in the past, but I just thought I'd mention it again. Um, for anybody that is new around here and might find that helpful, um, a torch that you can turn down pretty, pretty low is very, very helpful. And then the second thing I wanted to talk to you about was this teeny tiny little scraper. I'll get you a couple close-ups, flip the camera around. But I don't know if you caught it in the time lapse, but these teeny tiny little scrapers are also really nice for fine details. You can scrape up just a little bit away and um, still leave a nice fine line. This particular scraper is made by Kemper Tools. And if I can find the link, I'll put it down below. 
I just turned my other griddle on. So got both griddles going and I'm going to paint the pathway next. <laughs> It has really started to rain outside, so hopefully you can hear me over the raindrops on the metal roof in here, but I thought I would share one more tip today before I call it here in the studio, and that is another way to get details when you have a wider brush is to tilt that brush on its end and just use the very end of that brush and you get these teeny tiny little detailed lines. So. Um, I think the last tip of the day and I'll probably call it in here. I have a few things I have to do this afternoon. So I will pick you guys back up tomorrow. Good morning. It is another chilly start to the day. So it's kind of nice to be in here with the wax on. Hopefully it'll warm up a bit. And um, today's plan is to get another layer of wax, more details onto this painting. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to bring out a couple of these tree trunks, like the ones that are more in the foreground. So like these two here, I think that middle one and definitely this one. So I'm gonna start with that this morning, see how far I get along. And then maybe even this afternoon, come back in with a bunch of greens and yellows in the um, leaf area and really kind of pop some of that out. So that's the plan. So before I add some more colors to the two painting palettes, I'm going to clean off the paint that I think, fingers crossed, <laughs> I'm done with. So um, first things first, clean off the palette and then start painting. I think the camera is picking this up, but I think you can tell the difference between this tree and this tree. I'm just bringing that out just a bit more, adding some more texture to it, more layers, I'm just popping that tree out, or that tree trunk, I guess, out. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue on with the rest of these tree trunks, stick you on a quick time lapse. Um, for me, it'll probably be a good maybe hour or so working on these tree trunks for you guys. I think it'll be about 30 seconds. So hope you enjoy it. Okay, I think it's much better, the trees. I'll flip the camera around and show you. I'm gonna go take a quick lunch break and then come back and do the leaves. And then I think this painting might be done. I might be able to get it done today, I'm not sure. Anyways, let me flip the camera around and show you the texture of these tree trunks. I think they came out um, really nicely. So hard to pick this up in the camera <laughs> and to try to get it to focus there. I think that's better. But um, I think you can see that texture. Encaustic is so hard to have come across on a video and in photos. It's so much nicer to see it in person, but at any rate, I think those four trees look much better and uh, we'll pick you up in just a few seconds. Okay, I'm gonna put my one 
paint palette, my one griddle, off to the side. I think I'm done with the colors on it, but before I clean it off and scrape all the colors off, um, I don't want to, you know, just dump the paint into the little bin, even though I melt it down anyways, but I don't want to waste any of it, just in case I still need it to go back in to any of these tree trunks. I think they're done, but you know, just in case. So I'm basically going to be working with the one griddle using greens and some yellows. And because they're pretty compatible, I'm not going to be making mud. So I'm going to stick with the one palette. I've also switched out my larger bristle brush for the smaller bristle brushes. And let me flip the camera on here and show you um, the paint palette and kind of the what I'm working with. Because I'm going to put you on time lapse here momentarily and you're not going to be able to see the paint palette. Eventually I'll figure out another setup, but not for now. All right, so here's the paint palette. Basically I have two different greens two different yellow orangey greens and then I have some clear encaustic medium and I wanted to show you these little pieces drips here came off of the side of the painting here so they just kind of flake off <laughs> and rather than waste them because they were the very first layers and they just dripped down the side they're pretty much completely still clear encaustic medium so I'm going to be using these just to add in to that regular store-bought paint to um, dilute it just a bit. And then one last thing, this is soy wax, which I use to clean my brushes out, which is what is in that tin there. It looks blue, and that's because I've been cleaning my brushes out with it. So I'm just going to add in a bit more, doesn't need a lot. And you can really continue to just use that until it gets really quite dirty. That's the last thing on the palette, so let's get to painting. I wanted to add in some tiny little sprigs of trees. So I'm taking a Stabilo pencil and some water and the water is kind of off to the side, but I'm basically dipping that pencil. It's a black pencil into that water and then drawing right onto the encaustic paint. This is another great way to get details into a painting. And this is one of the few pencils that actually draw over the encaustic. So just adding in these little tree sprigs. And then of course you do have to fuse this layer to the wax layer. And again, that's where the tiny, or not tiny, but the TS3500 torch comes in so handy because you can turn it down so low and not lose all of those fine details that you just drew into your painting. All right, I think this painting is done um, other than a few final touches like taking the tape off and buffing it up and putting a hanger on the back. I think the painting is done. I, I decided it needed a little bit more in the uh, foreground and down below in some of the areas down below. So I added a few more details and now I think it is done. I think you can see that in that area here, but you can still see some of those hand veins also poking through. So also just kind of really love that they're in there, but they're hidden and there's a meaning behind it. And I know I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I don't know if I just, because I just finished this one or what, but um, I think this might be my all time favorite painting that I've ever done. I just really, really love how it came out. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is leave you here for this video and then do one more video 
of just the final prepping of the painting, taking off the tape, finishing up the edges, you know, showing you all of that stuff. Um, but this way, this video kind of stays nice and short and sweet. And then the next part will be the final, final touches on the painting. If you have any questions whatsoever on this process or if anything happens to pop into your head, whether it's about this process or another process, definitely let me know down there below in the comments. Happy to answer everything and anything um, that I can when it comes to encaustic. So um, again, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a great big thumbs up. It truly does help me out. Consider subscribing if you're not. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.